All right, guys, welcome back. We're looking at the spinning back fist, and who better to use as an example than K1 Phenom Takeru Sagawa? So we're gonna start in about right here. Okay, so then we're gonna travel up the kinetic chain, spend a lot of time on the shoulder, and then we'll focus a little bit on whenever the contact is made, kind of what contributes to a knockout. It'll be a little bit shorter video since this is the only view we have. Okay, so after the teep, kind of doesn't hit like he wants it to, and then he plants his front leg, and we're gonna start here. So typically we look at the rear leg being a triple extender. It's a little bit different since he's, his back is essentially facing his opponent as he starts to plant and create that good kinetic chain. So when he plants his back leg, he's plantar flexing or extending. He is getting, I would say double extension. So there's a lot of plantar flexion for muscles like the gastroc and the soleus from the foot and then extending the knee with muscles like the quads, but he doesn't get extension at the hip. And it's just due to the positioning and his fight IQ, et cetera. So as he's doing that, we'll travel up to the trunk. And we've talked about this before. We've talked about the hip, hip shoulder separation. He does not do this here. He keeps his trunk nice and tight. We've talked about situations where you might want to use the hip trunk separation. But notice his, his, the, the plane of his shoulders, if you were to draw a line straight through, and then the plane of the hips, if you were to draw straight through, they move relatively with one another, okay? There's no separation of the shoulders and the hips like you would see in a spinning kick or maybe like a hook, a lead hook that we've seen in the past. So he's not getting a ton of hip shoulder separation, but the stretch reflex is still here, okay? So I want you to focus here on the shoulder girdle now. So the scapular and just the upper extremity, the scapular region and the upper extremity in general. Watch, so let's back up. Whenever he starts to plant his leg, his shoulder blade here, the medial border of his scapula, the inside of the shoulder blade is close to the spine here. Now when he plants, look how far away it is. Okay, you can actually see the line here because he's so lean it actually helps us out. So that's an eccentric elongation, which meaning the, the muscle is still contracted, it's just elongating. And that's the first part of the stretch reflex here. Not only that, over here the posterior delt, which is typically horizontally abducting the shoulder, is on a long stretch as well because that arm is straight across his body. It's in a horizontally adducted position, which is typically where we see people end whenever they throw a hook. So he keeps his arm close to his body until about right here. So we can imagine that that shoulder blade has slid all the way kind of around into an abducted position and his horizontal, that horizontal abducted position at the glenohumeral joint has put a ton of uh, eccentric elongation or stretch on those muscles. Right about here is where that amortization phase uh, comes into play when we talked about whenever we did the video on the stretch reflex. So it's the switch from the eccentric to the concentric. And so it's a very powerful contraction of those muscles and then concentric contraction, it lands perfectly, creates that rotation and it's lights out for his opponent. Okay, so one more time, we've got double joint extension down here, starting his kinetic chain. We've got ankle plantar flexion, which is this ankle extension, and then knee extension. Not hip extension, though. In this case, it would be actual relative hip flexion, a little bit of internal rotation in the closed chain. So his upper body and his hips, so his hips and his shoulders are not dissociating, but because of that, he is creating a massive stretch when he starts to spin to the right, so just trunk rotation, global trunk rotation to the right, puts a massive stretch on muscles like the rhomboids in the middle trap and the posterior delt. That concentric contraction occurs for a more forceful strike and it lands perfectly. All right, so now that we've looked at the strike, I want you to shift your attention to the head of the opponent here. So as soon as he makes contact, notice that he's in a relative position of right cervical rotation. So he's looking to the right. As soon as he makes, uh, Takeru makes contact, he's all the way, <laughs> he's looking all the way to the left. That forceful rote acceleration, that angular acceleration of his head, of his cervical spine, actually puts a ton of tension on the axons of the nerve cells or the neurons uh, that are responsible for carrying cells or carrying action potentials or signals to the brain and back. So we think that a process of mechanoporation or these, these mechanical breaks are happening somewhere along the signal transmission. 
So we think that that big stretch put on the axon and then that forceful kind of rebound whiplash effect is what causes that acute loss of consciousness whenever someone gets knocked out. So he's in right rotation, makes contact in a big left rotation, and he even gets that, gets that rebound kind of rotation back to the right. So I've got a video on that if you want to check that out, but really good stuff. This is a, an, an amazing look at the spinning back fist and I'll actually play it all the way through this time so that we can see it in action. Yeah, super fast.